Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, October 9th, 2012, and I'm Darko. I'm going to start off with the Mideast and this uh, report for today. First article I have for you is Assad poses no threat to the Middle East. Last week, the uh, conversation or interview between Spiegel and uh, Saleh of Iran uh, starts with talking about a buffer zone. And it uh, ended with Saleh's comment, but NATO cannot afford to make a mistake and worsen the situation. And Spiegel goes on and says, such as an establishment of a buffer zone in northern Syria and a no-fly zone for Assad's air force. Then Saleh says, by doing so, the West would react just as wrongly as it did in 2011 in Libya. This was an improper interference in the internal affairs of a sovereign state. And of course, the magazine goes on, but it probably prevented a massacre in Benghazi and helped entire people free itself from a dictator, right? So they had to um, show that the ends justified the means. Of course, Libya right now is a, a, a hell on earth. Uh, it, it's it's horrible over there. They have nothing, and they're just constant, uh, constantly, constantly fighting each other. So it's a lot worse than when they first went in there. And, of course, the ambassador got killed, uh, murdered, so by the same people that the U.S. is supporting. So, no, it's not working. Uh, we should proceed according to the rules of international law. Uh, Syria is in the midst of a crisis. For its five or 14 provinces are facing difficulties. Assad's government largely has the situation under control. The magazine, magazine says you are downplaying the actions of a regime that is shelling its own people. The Syrian civil war has already claimed the lives of 30,000 people. And it goes on and it says... What is happening in Syria is tragic and not just the government troops that are responsible. And this is where they get the quote for the headline, Assad poses no threat to the region or to world peace for that matter. We are not uncritical of him. The government has made mistakes, blah, blah, blah. Originally there are, were only calls for more democracy and changes, but then the movement began to increasingly be controlled from abroad. In an earlier comment, Saleh says, military forces infiltrating Syria are seeking to internationalize the conflict. If the region goes up in flames, then they have achieved their objective. Of course, they'll get the regime change. IDF intelligence preps for Assad's demise as the weakening of the Syrian regime and influx of jihadists poses new threat to Israel. Wow, so this is kind of going off that uh, report that we were talking about, about the regime change from the Brookings Institute. So it's going exactly according to plan as far as the big bad threat to Israel as far as the influx of jihadists on Israel's border and of course uh, giving the impression that Assad is weak when well he's not. They can't even recruit the terrorist mercenaries that the West is um, arming and stuff like that. The Free Syrian Army and that, um, they're actually not able to recruit so. Israeli Air Force shoots down drone aircraft. This is something that went across the news recently. They shot down a drone aircraft after it crossed into southern Israel on Saturday, the military said, but it remained unclear where the aircraft had come from. Then we have this article uh, from October 8th. No drone detected crossing from Lebanon into Israel. The UN force says it hasn't spotted any breach of Israeli airspace from Lebanon. Responsibility for the drone mission yet to be claimed. So yeah, they tried to uh, link it with Hezbollah, but they say they don't possess that technology. Israeli jets fly mock raids over South Lebanon. Uh, I've covered this before about the uh, Israeli drones violating Lebanon airspace. They do it literally on a daily basis and nothing ever happens. So, uh, But God forbid if something flies near Israeli airspace, right? It justifies nuking the entire planet just to uh, save their sovereignty. Israeli warplanes swoop low over Lebanese villages Sunday in a menacing show of force apparently aimed at the Hezbollah guerrilla group after a mysterious raid by an unmanned aircraft that was shot out of Israeli skies over the weekend. So it was probably a, just an Israeli drone itself, probably just shot down their own drone, right? It's a good old tactic, a strategy. Egypt studying proposals for Sinai Bedouin police force. So they want a police force in the Sinai. So this is what we're talking about, right? The little buffer zone around Israel and that, but critics warn of a militia state. They want to create a local security force in the penins peninsula, sorry, where the state is struggling to impose its authority and uproot Islamic militants who have attacked Egyptian troops and neighboring Israel. The Bedouins who make up the bulk of the population in its northern desert and southern mountainous areas deeply resent the central government, say they have long suffered from discrimination and economic neglect at the hands of the officials and brutal crackdowns by security officials who in the past years have detained thousands of Bedouin youth, torturing many. Uh, this is my website, ggnonline.com. On YouTube, it's my channel is ddarko2012.
2012 and DDARCO 2013. I have a poll up here that you can check on, will you vote this November? Also, I'd like to thank those who donated to me recently. It's very much appreciated. You can put in your email address there and uh, follow GGN as well. Also, all the headlines and links for these articles I'm covering will be in YouTube's video description. Okay, Turkey sends fighter jets to Syrian border. Deployment comes amid reports of fierce fighting um, as rebels try to take control of strategic town. So Turkey has confirmed it is deploying more fighter jets to an air base close to the border with Syria amid artillery exchanges along its tense southern southeastern border with Syria. So Erdogan says Assad is only able to stand up with crutches. He will be finished when the crutches fall away. I meant to mention this uh, last set of videos uh, with the whole exchange with that uh, on the border, which was most likely um, as far as the, the mortar attacks. It came from the Free Syrian Army or the basically the rebel Islamic insurgents that the West is backing uh, for the regime change in Syria. But uh, either way, this video, Turkish threat of invading Syria, Zionist expansion depends on Assad's fall and Israel on high alert is from September 6, 2012, exactly a month ago, so go check it out. It kind of lays out what we're talking about here. NATO ready to defend Turkey against Syrian attacks. So against, right? It's all about the preemptive attack. Oh, I'm being, we're all being attacked, i.e. false flags and stuff like that, like on the border with the mortar shells, the Israeli drone uh, being downed, and of course, like 9-11, right? Not, NATO is ready to defend alliance member Turkey amid artillery and mortar exchanges with Syria, this official said. So this is a big deal because I've covered how NATO um, has been basically, um, not really against, but they haven't showed favor for supporting military intervention in Syria. And it says the comments by NATO's uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen were the strongest show of support to Ankara since the firing began on Wednesday. He said Turkey can rely on NATO solidarity, and he also added we have all the necessary plans in place to protect and defend Turkey if necessary. Next up, Romney vows to arm Syria insurgents. So, and whether it's Obama or Romney or whoever, it's still going to continue. And promising to arm the Syrian insurgents, the majority of whom are not even Syrian, Romney has pledged to send taxpayer money to Al Qaeda militants who have been responsible for carrying out terrorist attacks, which have killed hundreds of people. And some of the guns and arms intended for Saudi military are seen at Syrian rebels' base, says report. And the caption says a crate of arms belonging to Saudi Arabia discovered at the Syrian insurgents base in the city of Aleppo. There was three crates in all and the manufacturer was from Ukraine. Saudi officials have refused to comment on the report. They say um, they don't know how they got there. But remember, I just uh, had a report recently where I said Qatar is going to be leading the uh, pan-Arabian uh, charge to Syria. So one of the comments was Signal Corp. Items are communications set. So uh, next up we have Free Syrian Army building military bases for the Mujahideen, or MKO terrorists. Well, actually, they were just removed from the terrorist list, but the so-called Free Syrian Army, the main armed rebel group fighting Assad's government, announced that it has set up two battalions called a Martyr Saddam Hussein in cities of uh, Idlib and Deir al-Zar in Syria. So it's an act of defiance and a move aimed at provoking the feelings of the Kurds in general, and Syrian Kurds in particular. The Free Syrian Army formed the two battalions. So this was kind of a big deal. The analysts believe that these acts, which are condemned and seen as worrisome by Kurds and all Syrians, might push the opponents to retract and backtrack on their moves against Assad's government. Earlier reports also said that the Free Syrian Army is building the military base for the anti-Iran terrorist group uh, in the bordering areas of Syria and Lebanon. It was interesting because I saw an article today that said that uh, killing a scientist is an act of terrorism. It says the MKO is behind a new uh, slew of assassinations and bombings inside Iran. Of course, what? The scientists, right, that they killed and assassinated. Well, that's an act of terrorism. Well, why did the U.S. remove them from the terrorist list recently? Well, of course, because they want to co-opt them and use them like they do um, al-Qaeda and all the um, basically Muslim extremists around the world to uh, impose regime changes. So, yeah, so pretty crazy. I have to remember this. Free Syrian Army building military bases for the Mujahideen. Next up, U.S. now overtly supporting the MKO terrorist operations. Land Destroyer interview uh, published by Iran Review. Yeah, so it's a show of hostility towards the Iranian nation and an exercise of double standards as, as the U.S. State Department has just removed the MKO from its list of foreign terrorist organizations. 
which was established on September 5, 1965, a terrorist cult which assisted Saddam Hussein, which you saw shaking hands with what? Um, Donald Rumsfeld in that, in a 1980s war with Iran and killed more than 40,000 innocent Iranian civilians. So they try to talk about how it's about the um, nuclear nuclear uh, deal, right? The nuclear threat. However, the high-ranking MKO officials have constantly declared that their final objective is regime change in Iran. In fact, the Council of the European Union had removed the name MKO from the EU's list of terrorists back in 2009. So it's a good article, an interview. You can go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. Um, this one, did the CIA have a double agent inside Al-Qaeda? When, when they talk about that in the mainstream media, most people don't know what it means. But there are a lot of people that are waking up to this stuff, this false flag terrorist and that, and the government sponsoring terror. Uh, but they can't quite make the, the connections, right? And even if they could, you know, the sparks start to fly and the little gears uh, start to lock up and break off and they just don't want to know anymore, right? And uh, But basically, what? It's intelligence op uh, agencies uh, basically steering Al-Qaeda, which is a loose, loosely very loosely organi uh, organization of terrorists that they use for their own means, mostly Sunnis and that, uh, and the Zionists use them to take on Shia-type governments. So a Danish man claims he worked with the CIA to infiltrate Al-Qaeda, was a double agent for years to help track radical cleric, uh, well, he's dead now, he was killed by a drone strike until the prominent Al-Qaeda figure was killed by America, oh, there you go. So he's the first American killed by a drone strike, remember that? So he claims he was a former radical who had been turned by the Danish intelligence service and later worked with the CIA. However, the CIA maintains that uh, Alaki was killed thanks to a parallel mission and not because of his uh, work, Storm's work. A parallel mission, i.e. like bin Laden, they want to take out their assets that they actually worked with. So Al-Qaeda affiliates are getting stronger, says a U.S. official terrorist groups in Mali and Yemen. Are affiliated with Al-Qaeda are gaining strength in large by taking hostages for ransom. I, this is blowback from what the West has been doing as far as regime change in Libya and that. And um, they armed them and um, they left Libya and they started wreaking havoc in other countries. And uh, actually where they went back home, like in Mali. Of course, I don't think this article is going to tell you that, that this uh, Al-Qaeda were actually fighting. They were the peaceful activists in Libya and now the peaceful activists, Syrian activists, no, they're foreigners, and they just go, and they're like a terrorist company for hire, and they, you know, they, I hate to say this, they're useful idiots, right? And I only say that because that's the best description, because the U.S. needs Al-Qaeda. They need that opposing force to be able to go into places like Mali and Yemen, right? That's all about resources. That's what it's all about. So, but I've seen so many times articles say, well, Al-Qaeda is dwindling. You know, now Al-Qaeda is getting stronger, right? So Western propagandists attempt to trigger catastrophic Turkish-Syrian war. Bloomberg, Guardian, Ynet, all air unconfirmed reports on agreement for Turkish-Syrian buffer zone. So it says here that the report states specifically that the Syrian government has told its military to keep aircraft at least six miles from Turkey's border after a deadly shelling incident. It says a new site cited Turkey's um, NTV MSNBC, which quoted reliable sources yesterday that saying Assad's regime has ordered its warplanes and helicopters to honor the buffer. Neither Turkey's government nor the Syrian officials confirmed the report. Accompanying this report are stories such as Reuters' UN Syria buffer zone plan raises questions with state. And while the idea of a buffer, buffer zone or no-fly zone, like they had in Libya, is meant to look like a knee-jerk reaction to a still unjustified exchange of fire in the Turkish-Syrian border. It says here, in reality, this has been planned since March of this year, where the idea proposed by corporate financier Brookings Institute and their Middle East Memo Number 21, assessing options for regime change, where it says specifically that alternative for diplomatic efforts to focus first on how to end the violence and how to gain humanitarian access as being done under Anand's leadership. It may lead to the creation of safe havens and humanitarian corridors or buffer zones. And the report admits that this would, of course, fall short of U.S. goals for Syria could uh, preserve Assad power, i.e. they won't get the regime change. But from that starting point, however, it's possible that a broad coalition with the appropriate international mandate could further add further coercive action to its efforts. So then they can get military intervention, which is what they're getting kind of uh, as far as NATO backing them now. It appears that the West has found or manufactured their pretext 
The unconfirmed reports floated by the allegedly reputable news agencies citing high place sources in the Turkish media reeks of propaganda, public perception management, and psychological warfare. Thank you.